Hi, my name is Steve Cavallaris with electricaltime.com. So in this episode today, we're going to be taking a look at that riser mast that's made of rigid metal conduit. We call that RMC. And we're looking at an old service. And what we're going to be looking at is a violation of the National Electrical Code. So let's go check this out. Okay, so now we're doing a close-up view on that mast for this overhead service. And if you look over here, where my finger is, my finger's over here, you can see we have a little something that, that's nice and shiny, and that's a coupling. And that's actually a violation of the National Electrical Code. So let's go into our code book, and let's go check out what that violation is. Let's go check out our code book, our National Electrical Code book here. And we are in the 2023 version of the National Electrical Code. And we're going to be looking at section 230.28a, and that's called strength. And here's what it says. The service mast shall be of adequate strength or be supported by braces or guy wires to withstand safely the strain imposed by the service drop or overhead service conductors, hubs intended for use with a conduit that serves as a service mast shall be identified for use with service entrance equipment. All right, so basically what we're looking at here is there's no guy wire here and that should have been supported probably here somewhere to the roof so that when the overhead conductors are pulling right there could be a big wind or something could be happening and they're yanking you know on that mast that the guy wire is there and the guy wire is actually helping to keep the force in the other direction so that the mast is not going to get bent out of shape and possibly break and that's all that that means all right so that's our first violation here and let's take a look at our second violation and that's 230.28b and that's called attachment and it says service drop or overhead service conductors and these are the overhead service conductors over here shall not be attached to a service mast between a weather head, and here's the weather head up there, or the end of the conduit and a coupling. Okay, here's our conduit over here, and here's our coupling down there, where the coupling is located above the last point of securement to the building. And what is that last point of securement? That's going to be over here. That's where there's going to be the hole in the roof, and that's where that hole should have been drilled just exactly so it's not going to get all wiggly jiggly up there also below where it's on the building there must be straps so it must be securely fastened and then it goes on to say or other structure or is located above the building or other structure all right so let's get rid of all of my handwriting here for a second my scribbles all right, so basically, you know, we're just looking at this as common sense. So we got this point of attachment over here, and it's pulling this way. And we got this coupling down here, and that's a weak point. That's a weak point. So we're not supposed to have the coupling down there that's below the point of attachment. All right. Now, let's say we need to have um, an increase in height. For whatever reason, let's say we needed to have some additional height uh, for the overhead conductors over the roof. And you had to install, let's say, a coupling over here. Well, that coupling over there, right, it's above this point of attachment. And that would be okay. But whenever I see a coupling that's over the roof and just back to me here for a second. Again, this is just... Steve being a pain in the ass, okay? Uh, when I see a coupling that's over the roof, I have to ask myself, did the electrician really, you know, 
take the proper measurements or do they really know what they're doing? You know, or they're just trying to fix a mistake. So my suggestion is what Steve says, Steve recommends, not the code, not the code book. Don't put any couplings above a roof. And if you do have to do that, maybe you should explain to the electrical inspector or to the authority having jurisdiction why you're putting that coupling up there. Maybe there's a different way that you could be doing it. But what I would do, what Steve would do, I'd put that coupling, if I had to, I'd put it on the side of the building. Let's say you have your, your meter, right? And then let's say you had to go up 15 feet from the top of the meter. And we know that the rigid is only going to be 10 feet long, right? So maybe what you do is you take a five foot section of rigid and start it there right above your meter cabinet, go up, put your coupling there on the side of the house or the building, and then go up with a straight piece up through the roof. So there's no coupling up on the roof. And that's just what Steve is recommending. You can agree or disagree with me uh, in the comments in the video. Um, if you agree, let me know. And if you don't agree, let me know. It's fine. I'd like to find out uh, in, in what situations you had to put a coupling above the roof. All right. I'd like to hear that. All right. Let's go back into the video. All right. So um, just to repeat myself, and again, just to repeat myself, just so that we're absolutely clear about this. We got this coupling down here, and that's a weak point. We got that point of attachment over here, and we got all this pulling tension that's over here. So this coupling down here is a weak point. It's uh, not good. All right. So please don't do that on your installations. All right. So uh, let's go into our next violation here, which I think is a violation. I'm not exactly sure. I didn't go up on the roof to take measurements, but we're going to be looking at 800.44a in our code book. And article 800 is called general requirements for communications systems. And we're going to be looking at 800.44a and that's called on poles in span above roofs on masts or between buildings. And we're going to be looking at 800.44A4, and that's called clearances. It says, supply service drops and sets of overhead service conductors of 0 volts to 750 volts running above and parallel to communication wires and cables and CATV type coaxial service drops shall have a minimum separation of 12 inches at any point in the span, including the point on their attachment to the building, provided that the ungrounded conductors are insulated and that have a clearance of not less than 40 inches is maintained between the two services at the pole. All right, so what am I talking about here? All right, so we're talking about here the communication cables over here. That's the cable TV. And then we have our overhead service conductors or electrical conductors. We're talking about this distance in between. And it says that we have to have at least 12 inches of clearance on that mast. I'm not quite sure it's 12 inches. It, my, it, to me, it looked like a little bit less, but again, I wasn't going to go up there and find out. So I'm going to call that um, as a possible violation. So in this picture, from what I can see, uh, we got uh, one violation of 230.82a. We have another violation of 230.28b and a most likely violation of 844 a four for clearance. Okay. Also, I almost forgot about one thing. You can go to my website, electricaltime.com, and you can get free code questions and answers. Yes, you can, they're free. You don't have to pay anything for them. Just go to my website, electricaltime.com, click on the button that says free, and you see code questions and answers. And then Monday through Friday, 
just like magic, you get an email with the free code question and answer. And I'll catch you on the next one.